Hello again, Tony Wright, First Love Christian Church, FLCC, AB Wright Ministries. This is the 90-day Bible study, and we're on day number 74. We're still in the book of Luke, Gospel according to St. Luke. We'll be covering uh, chapters 10 through about 20. Now, as we ended yesterday's reading, Jesus had just tipped the disciples to what the true cost of discipleship is, and that anyone that turns back after putting their hand to the plow was not worthy of entering into the kingdom. Now, as we started today's reading, we saw him commissioning 70 laborers to go forth in ministry. And they were working as a kind of advanced team and going into every city that Jesus was to come into. And Jesus told them that the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Now, I have to tell you that there was a time in my life that this particular saying just didn't quite add up to me. But I finally figured out that what was referred to as the harvest here is the crop and it's still in the field. So what's to be harvested is truly great. So it would take all of us working together to get this crop out of the field. But he told the laborers to let the people know that the kingdom of God is come nigh to them. And Luke writes about the laborers returning later and, and being so overjoyed and, and telling Jesus that, that even the devils are subject to them through his name. And he told them that he's given them power to tread on, over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And that there is nothing that can harm them. But he also told them that that is not what they should be rejoicing about, but that they should be rejoicing because their names are written in heaven. Seems like to me, sometimes we get things you know, a little mixed up on what the main thing is, don't we? Then there was a lawyer that was trying to test Jesus. And he asked what he had to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus asked him, what did he understand the law to say about it? And the lawyer answered that uh, it says to love the Lord God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and to love thy neighbor as thyself. So Jesus told him that he gave the right answer. But then the dude went on to ask, who is his neighbor? So Jesus told him the parable about the Good Samaritan. You remember that one. As it turned out, the one that would likely not have had much to do with the man that was half dead was the very one that helped him. And the ones that would have thought to have helped him kept on on their way. And when Jesus asked the lawyer, which of them? Which of these people was the man's neighbor? The man answered that it was the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus told him to go and do likewise. So anyone that you come into contact with is in fact your neighbor. And anyone that stands in need is someone that you can show neighborly love to. Now, I'm not going to try to mess up your week or anything. But how many neighbors have you seen that was left by the roadside this week and just pass by, you know, one on the other side, you know, go and do likewise. I'm just saying. And Luke also tells a story about Mary and about Martha. You know about them, too. How Martha was just working herself into a frizzy and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he was saying. So Martha was a little worked up over that. one, And then Jesus told her that she was concerned with and bothered about many things, but that there's really only one thing that's a must. And Mary was doing that, and that would not be taken away from her. Now, if there's one thing that we can gain from this, is boy, if you can get some word, you hear me? People worry about jobs, they worry about status, fame, money, fine car, big home, everything in the world except for the word. If you get anything, and I mean anything, get the word. Now, Jesus, he tells the story of the disciples asking, uh, I mean, Luke tells the story of the disciples asking Jesus to teach them to pray like John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus, he recited to them what we call the model prayer, or some might call the Lord's Prayer. Then he went on to tell them that God will do things for them even more so than we would do for each other. So Jesus told him that anyone that has a friend that comes asking for something, 
or that's in need of something, that we would not turn them away. And God won't turn us away. So Jesus told them to ask and it shall be given. To seek and ye shall find. To knock and it shall be opened unto them. So much of what we don't have mm -hmm, is because we haven't asked. <laughs> and there's also the story there about some of the people accusing Jesus of casting out spirits through the powers of the devil. And Jesus asked them, how can a spirit Work against itself. If he was of the devil, why would he be casting out devils? Jesus told him about the sign given by Jonah, spending three days in the belly of the fish and preaching repentance to the Ninevites. And that was a sign to them now. And Jesus reminded them that lights aren't to be put in a secret place, but they're to be put on a candlestick and held up so that people can see them. And he chastised the Pharisees and scribes for their hypocrisy and for caring so much about the outward appearance of themselves and, and about the things that they do, but not really giving care to being true and to being upright and to being holy at heart and requiring of others things that they themselves are not even willing to do. Boy, have you ever run into that? Folk can tell you every single thing that you need to do, but you better know they aren't about to tell you what they're doing. Now, Jesus told them that there was nothing done or covered that would not be revealed and nothing hid that would not be known. And he told them uh, that they need not be afraid of those who could kill the body because that's all they could do. But the one that they should be concerned about is the one that after the body is dead, after the body has been killed, that can cast them and their soul into hell. Fear him. But that God has not even so much as forgotten a sparrow. And the very hairs on their head is numbered. And God knows even that. And Jesus made it clear that the focus should be about God and spreading the word of the kingdom. And that they need not even be worried about what to say because God would give them what to say when the time came. Then Jesus talked to them about not being greedy. And about uh, that the value of life was not in their possession. And he told a parable about the rich man uh, who had so much that he was going to tear down his barn and build bigger ones so he could store all his goods so he could be set for many years. And God said to that man, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And Jesus told his disciples not to worry what they should eat or drink or wear. That God takes care of the ravens and the lilies of the field are arrayed more beautifully than even Solomon was. And God will take care of them. And we can say the same for us. God will take care of us. And he went on to tell them where the point of focus should be. And it's, it said to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Now here, Jesus told his disciples to let their loins be girded about and their light burning. In other words, to be dressed and ready with their lamps burning, like the servants that were waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. Now, Jesus told them that, that people are good at discerning from the sky when it was about to rain or discerning from the wind when it was going to be hot, but that they were clueless about the time they were facing right now with him in their presence. But Jesus told them that these people would not need to, that, that, you know, that they were going to need to repent or they were surely going to perish. Then Luke tells of a woman that had been crippled, you know, by a spirit for 18 years and was bent over, not even able to straighten up. And Jesus healed her. But the rulers of the synagogue, they were upset because Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath. And Jesus called them, yep, hypocrites, because all of them would have let their oxen loose to get to you know give them water to water them on the Sabbath, but this woman had been tied up for eighteen years. Should she not be let loose because it was the Sabbath? Now Jesus went; he went on uh, through the cities and the villages, teaching and preaching, and and he told parables, uh, and, and he told a parable about the straight gate, and that not everyone that's trying to enter would get in; that there would be some that he would tell to depart for. Uh, depart from it because he never knew them. 
Now, ain't that something? You, want, you don't want to hear that one. <laughs> now, Jesus, uh, Luke tells of Jesus being warned that Herod was going to try to kill him. But Jesus told him to go tell Herod that he was casting out devils and curing people. And that was going to continue. And he was going to keep traveling and doing that. And that this prophet could not be killed before getting to Jerusalem. Because Jesus knew that until his mission was complete, he was good to go. <laughs> and he later told the parable of the great supper and the parable about the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. And he told the multitudes about the cost of discipleship and that they must count up the cost to follow him, to be a disciple. You got to count up the cost. And that they were to be the salt of the earth. Now, Luke also writes of Jesus telling the parable of the unjust steward and of the rich man and the beggar in Abraham's bosom. And Jesus warned the disciples that offenses were going to come. In fact, he said that they it was impossible that they don't come, but that the real danger is to those uh, that the offenses come through, but that they were to rebuke those who trespass against them, and if they repent, to forgive them. In fact, to forgive them as many times as they repent, and as many times they repent, they are to be forgiven. And Luke, he tells these 10 lepers that were healed, and that only one returned to thank the Lord for his healing. And that man, he was a Samaritan. As Jesus said, he was a stranger. Now, it's interesting that a stranger showed more thankfulness than his own people. And that's often, though, <laughs> pitifully, just how it is. And when the Pharisees asked how long it would be before the kingdom of God would come, Jesus told them that the kingdom of God would not be something that, that they could see because the, the kingdom of God was within. And then he went on to, to tell the disciples about the kingdom. And to the Pharisees and to the others around who thought that they were more righteous than others, he told a parable about the uh, Pharisee and the publican. You know, where the Pharisee, in his prayer, he was thanking God that he was not like others. You know, the others who were unjust and adulterers. And, uh, uh, he said he thanked God he's not like the publican. <laughs> and then the publican, he just prayed for God to be merciful to him as a sinner. He wouldn't even look toward heaven. He just beat his chest and said, Lord, be merciful to me, the sinner. And Jesus said that that publican who acknowledged his shortcomings, he was justified in his prayer. But that God would bring down everyone that tried to exalt himself. Then Jesus sent two of his disciples up to get a coat for him, you know, a donkey, a foal, so that he could go into Jerusalem. And they brought it back to him. And he entered into Jerusalem to those loud cheers and to the praise of God. And they said, you know, blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Then Jesus went to the temple. Mm -hmm. And he cast out those who sold and bought. And he began to teach there in the temple. Now, today's reading it ended with Jesus telling the parable of the Lord of the vineyard. And you remember that one that ends with the caretakers killing the owner's son when he came to get it from the harvest out of the vineyard. Boy, <laughs> we need never forget that we're just caretakers. We don't own it. Everybody wants to act like the boss, don't they? Hey, just speaking of caretakers, you take care. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, you keep on reading this word, and please keep checking us out on whatever you plug into for social media. And please, let your friends know. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, FLCC, hey, we're working in the vineyard, but we're taking ministry back to the first love. Peace.